Today we're going to go for a little sail. One of our patrons got in touch with us recently and said, could you do a video on sailing basics? So we thought we'd take this opportunity just to shake out the sails and try our best to do a walkthrough about the procedures that we go through from weighing anchor, which is what Liz is doing now, to getting the sails out. first thing you need to do is to stow the boat and close all the hatches. To remember the skipper is always responsible for everything. So even if you designate a crew member to go around closing the hatches, it's always a good idea to double check them. Uh, you'll learn the hard way. If you don't close your hatches properly, you'll end up getting a very wet bookcase or a wet bed. So that's of vital importance. And then of course, before you start the engine, you want to do your oil checks and your water checks as well. So assuming that all your preparation is in hand, uh, the next thing to do, of course, is to plan your route. So really important to get to know the lay of the land, know your exit strategies, your entry strategies, and if anything were to go wrong or the wind changes direction, to understand your uh, contingency plans as well. So if you can't make it through one channel entrance, perhaps there's another one that you should be fairly familiar with before you even attempt to approach it. Well, enough chatter. I think it's about time we got on weighed anchor and tried to find some of this uh, light breeze that is somewhere out there. So this is the mizzen, it's the shorter of the two masts and this really helps balance the boat. So I'm going to get this one out now as we exit through this channel. Always keep an eye on the depth, make sure one of your displays when you're coming in and out of bays is to keep your display on depth just so you can quickly glance at it. We're in 25 meters at the moment so we should be all right. So the mizzen. I'll break down these lines in a little bit more detail but one thing you'll notice is that we have this system called in-mast furling so the sail sits inside the mast and we literally just unfurl the sail from inside the mast. This is different to most boats which haul their masts, uh, their sails up the mast. Liz getting busy there with her fishing gear, which is the other really crucial thing to be doing. I'm just going to go back to the helm, just check on our depth. Yep. So even though we're checking the charts, we're also looking, using our eyeballs as well. On a bright day like this with polarised glasses, you can quite clearly see the reefs that surround the islands. Uh, so you get a real sense of the shallow patches that correlate with what's on the chart. My hat, it has three corners. Three corners has my hat. And just like my hat, basic boat sails have three corners and the naming convention applies to most sails on a boat. The top corner of the sail is called the head and the line attached to this is an uphaul. On most boats with fully slab mainsails, you pull the uphaul to raise the sail. On in-mast furling and furling head sails, this stays hoisted and is instead unfurled by a sheet or an outhaul, which is attached to the clue, the rear corner of the sail. So I'll just explain this sail in more detail. The idea is, is that the sail is on a traveller that's got an outhaul, and that's what this is. The outhaul is what you use to pull out at the back end of the sail along the track. And the other thing that we have is the topping lift. The topping lift is this line that holds this boom up. Once you've got the sail out, you then free up the topping lift so you loosen it off so that the boom drops and the pressure the sail itself is taking the weight of the boom. We then have a kicking strap which is this and you pull this down uh, to pull that boom down and flatten that sail as tight as possible uh, certainly when going into wind we'll talk a bit more about that the different points of sail and how you tension and angle the sail. There are many videos on YouTube about how to set a sail, so we won't go into too much detail here. 
but the basic principle is to keep your sails tight and close to the centre of the boat when going into wind, and then let them out and loosen off as the wind comes round and beyond the beam behind you. Today we're sailing into wind. We were taught to start from the foresails and work backwards when going into wind, and vice versa when the wind is behind you, but we're going to break that rule today and work forwards. The next sail we're getting out today is the mainsail. We keep the boat pointing into wind to take the forces of the wind off the sails. Our mainsail works in exactly the same way as the mizzen. Although Esper has been designed to handle the sails from the cockpit, on calm days we go to the mast to pull on both the furling line and the outdoor as it's quicker. We let off the clutch to the furling line in the cockpit. We make sure the topping lift is pulled up to take the weight of the boom and angle it upwards for easy unfurling. On the port side, we can keep the other end of the furling line locked off. Make sure the kicking strap has been let off and prepare the outhaul, ready to be put around the winch to tension. At the mast, Jamie is pulling on both the furling line and the outhaul, which makes getting out the sail quick and easy, providing you've tidied your lines, of course. The outboard is then put around the winch and tensioned. After that, we release the topping lift and tension the kicking strap to keep the sail tight. How's it look? One thing you'll notice when looking at our mainsail are the ripples in the luff. This is normally a sign that the sail has dropped and that the uphaul needs tensioning to pull it up. It's worth noting that on Esper we have running backstays which are tensioned to balance the staysail when going into wind. However, the leeward stay gets in the way of the mainsail boom if we let the boom out, so we take the stay that's not being used forwards and tie it off amidships. Before tacking, we have to swap these around in preparation for the wind to come over the other side of the boat. This is a quirk of our catch cutter design and not so common on sloops. Now we move on to the foresails. We start with the inner foresail, called the staysail, by preparing the furling line. We let off the clutch to allow the drum to spin freely because we unfurl the sail by pulling on the sheets. The sail is furled away by closing the clutch, letting off the tension on the sheet and pulling on the furling line. Ready? After getting out the staysail, we move on to the headsail. Here you can see Jamie preparing the sheet on the windward side, which has to run free when furling the sail out on the leeward side. You'll also notice that after getting a sail out, we close all clutches and tidy away the lines to ensure that they don't go overboard or that we don't trip on them. The headsail works in the same way as the staysail. The furling line that runs to the drum has to be released and be able to run free. If the mainsail helps provide balance to the boat, then the head sail is the accelerator, providing the drive to move the boat forwards. With this in mind, if the engine is still on, we put the boat into neutral before pulling on the sheet. We put two wraps around the drum and pull by hand. You can see that as I pull on the head sail sheet, so the furling line runs through the open clutch. There will be a point at which you can no longer pull by hand. So you make the sheet off on the winch and grab the winch handle to trim the sail. Okay. You want to be watching your telltales. The telltales on both port and starboard side of the sail should be flying horizontally to gain the correct angle of incidence. 
if the telltale on the leeward side is horizontal, but the windward one is hanging down, the sail needs to be tensioned further. If the telltales at the top of the sail are flying horizontally, but the ones at the bottom are not, then there is an incorrect amount of twist in the sail. To remedy this, you need to reposition the car on your track. There is of course so much more to sail trim as it's a complicated science, but the basic principles are pretty straightforward. We recommend Illustrated Sail and Rig Tuning by Ivla Dedekum, published by Fernhurst Books. We'll put it in the description below the video. It breaks down the science of sail and rig trim in easy to understand explanations with illustrations. Now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's just enjoy a gentle sail in the South China Sea. Hello. Sailing. There, there we go. Here's my able assistant. <laughs> expertly pulling those lines to get us out <laughs> properly sailing. Isn't it wonderful, Elizabeth? It's lovely. Just a lovely, lovely day. Got the line out, but not having much luck. Did catch some weed. We don't care about fishing. We care about <laughs> sailing. Look. I know, I know. Look I at know. these sails. I know, they're all out. And they're all nice and clean and they're doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah, the main sail's a bit baggy. I think we need to tighten yeah. that one. But aside from that, oh, it's such a joy. It is. 